This update video is gonna cover just one thing that I did, uh, fixing a major oil leak that I've had. I've talked about it in a couple other videos, I think, and it just got worse and worse. Might not have been that big of a job for some people, but it was for me, but I ultimately ended up doing it, and it was uh, fixing the oil cooler. So this whole video is gonna cover that. And then the next one, I'll have a bunch of the other smaller updates because I did do, at this point, I do have a lot more stuff done to the truck, but I try to keep the videos around like 15-ish minutes, so I didn't want the video to run long. All right. Oil cooler gaskets. Gonna remove it, clean it up. I got the whole gasket kit. Okay, I used a ton of tools on this job. So in the video, you can see what the obvious stuff is uh, to try to keep this from being so long, but I'll read off the stuff that you can't see. These studs, I made these. Uh, you'll see them to hold everything when you're putting it back together. At the time I'm recording this, I don't recall the threads, but I'll put a uh, the text in here. 7 eighths socket a five millimeter Allen half inch and three eighths. The half inch is actually used in place of the 13 when removing everything because the paint is so thick in some spots, the 13 doesn't fit on. Uh, a 15 millimeter, a seven sixteenths, a three quarters. A lot of these wrenches are the same size, three quarters, three eighths, seven eighths, one inch, 21 millimeter, nine sixteenths, half inch, 15, 17, 13, 7 sixteenths. These stubby wrenches, half in 13 again because of the paint. In 15, these come in real handy. Uh, some adjustables. Uh, I have 15 weight, 40 Rotella T4 motor oil to top off. Cat, extended life coolant. You're gonna see, I didn't know that the coolant system needed to be drained, so you, if you got clean buckets, you could drain your coolant system and save it. I didn't know it ended up spilling everywhere, so I had to go get 10 gallons of ELC. Good time to do a coolant flush if you want. Super clean for cleaning up. PB blaster, anti-seize for some of the stuff. O-ring lube is definitely needed. And uh, I got this wire wheel here. I ended up putting it on a drill, but uh, whatever you got, to uh, clean off old gasket material. One of these scraper, I ended up using this scraper too, cause uh, you can't use the wire wheel on the aluminum parts. So you just gotta carefully use this. But yeah, you can see I used a ton of tools uh, just to give you an idea to help get you started. The TM has this procedure. 3-TAC-19, 9-2320-365-34-2. There's the page. Goes through what you're going to need for tools. And then also in the parts technical manual, section 2, it's got the parts breakdown here. Just to give you like an exploded view. And this is where I found the part number for the kit. There's a whole kit if you're going to do this project instead of buying them. 7X2524. And here it is. I found it new old stock on eBay to save myself some money. I figured something like this really can't go bad. The guy folded it up when he sent it to me, but it was like a third of the cost. And it's still cat OEM. So in here, you have all the O-rings and stuff. I don't think this is as complicated as it looks. It's just there's a lot of little seals and stuff like that. The other things you're going to need out of the TM are 4-6, uh, the turbocharger replacement. 4-24. And in that same TM, 318, the oil filter base replacement. So another gasket kit that you need you're going to see later on i did end up needing to remove remove the turbo and you have to have this it's 7x-2526 i think this kit was replaced these are the other four gaskets you're going to need um, that aren't included in the kit 
for the turbo install. Uh, that other part number I just gave you, that's the kit. If it's not available, you can get away with just getting these. Uh, 4F7391, 7W2398, 1S7057, 7C7431. I go over these again as I'm putting everything back together. But I like to put the parts that you're going to need up front as well. Probably can get away without doing this, but these nuts, these are the lock nuts for the exhaust manifold to the turbo. Part number 9X6620. Four of them. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is take the alternator off and what I could do, or what I did, is label everything to make sure I don't mess it up. A lot of them are labeled anyway, but I did it in a way that I'll understand. Okay, taking the alternator off next. There's a bolt down in here to loosen for this tensioner. So you get the belts off. And you got a three quarters bolt going through with a nut on the other side and then whatever this size is. Coming through. Coming through. Coming through. Now you could really see how bad the oil leak is, but uh, I'm going to take this plastic piece off next. I'm going to take the, uh, can't remember the technical term, but the, the piece that the oil filter's on. I'm going to leave the oil filter on and just undo the bolts. I think I can get at all the ones that are on there. Okay, I got it off. <clears throat> Just gonna leave it here for the time being until it comes to clean up. I wanna get everything removed first. So, I mean, I've already taken the rubber thing off that was over here. I'm gonna get this tube completely out of the way, which is just a clamp up there. Uh, your exhaust coming down. TM shows remove this bolt right here so that way the clamp will open. And then remove this clamp. And I'm hoping with this thing being as old as it is, I'll be able to just get this piece off and get it out of the way. Then there's, this is the gasket that I'm missing. There's the four bolts there that attach the turbo to the exhaust manifold. Again, I, I'm, before I even start, I'm gonna soak the shit out of that with some PB and hope I don't break anything to get that off. And then you just have your oil feed lines, which you'd need to remove anyway for the oil cooler. And then this clamp, rubber clamp right here. For, uh, I may just remove it completely to get out of the way, but we'll see. That's what I'm going to work on next. All right, got everything out. I ended up undoing the clamp and removing the hole upright to the exhaust. You can see how it's been leaking for a while back here. Some of it I've already wiped away. So, uh, probably get that little coolant line out of the way. Hopefully there's nothing in it. And uh, start removing the oil cooler.
All right, so I got the last bolt just in there snug, and there's a ton of coolant and stuff dripping out. Uh, call me stupid or whatever, I didn't expect this much of a mess. So I'm basically just gonna have to deal with freaking coolant coming out everywhere. Um, hopefully it's not a lot, but I guess I just gotta commit and take it the rest of the way off. Well, again, call me stupid, I uh, got the top part off and it just seems like all my coolant is gonna come flying out of this thing. Um, it would have been nice if they put something in the TM to like drain the coolant system first. Uh, then I could have drained it properly into buckets and probably saved my brand new coolant and stuff. But here I am with this. So I'm gonna have a freaking mess of coolant all over my driveway and stuff. I'm not gonna record anymore. I'm just gonna wait till I get this off. All right, everything's off. What an event this is turning into. But, if it's fixed in the end, uh, the coolant I spilt, I just, best I could do with it was move all the crap out of the way and just, I'm gonna let the hose run and dilute it. With all that coolant dripping down, some of it was going into the holes that are for the oil. Probably gonna end up needing to do an oil change with this and uh, top off the coolant. More stuff to add to the list that I'm gonna have to go to the local Caterpillar dealer on Monday and get. I'm gonna move forward with just cleaning up this whole area, getting the O-rings that are stuck in there off and uh, cleaning up all these parts. I gotta check. Uh, one thing I read in the group a couple times and then someone told me was, I believe it's this piece to check it for warping. Uh, I don't really have a feeler gauge, but maybe I could put my straight edge on the level and just kind of look and see. But uh, just like some paint and stuff on here too, so try to get all that cleaned up. If I can start assembling it, because if this is bad, I need to get another one of these. Just wanted to show one thing before I start cleaning up. I did notice taking it off. You can see tearing the gasket right there and tearing it right here. And that's actually the spot where most of the oil was leaking from. It's possible I could have gotten away with just doing this gasket, but I'm in here doing it. So we're gonna go through the whole procedure. Uh, the TM does say as well to like remove these fittings and stuff like that and clean uh, the one. For the oil filter, there's like a spring and stuff in there too. So behind this fitting right here, this goes out to where the oil sampler, there's a O-ring behind here. It doesn't show it in the parts diagram for the oil cooler. I don't know exactly what O-ring this is out of the kit or if that kit even has it in there. So I'm gonna leave it. This wasn't leaking anyway. And this is easy to get at if for some reason it does leak. Okay, so here's the heads cut off these bolts. I'm choosing to put them in these so I can get everything lined up and then start putting everything together. What I did is I wrote the sequence on the paint of what bolt gets tightened and it's 11 foot pounds. So what I'm gonna do is just get them all in there and finger tight so I can get those temporary studs out. And then I'm gonna start torquing them down. Here's all the bolts. One issue that I didn't think of when I was removing this is these are all different lengths. So I'm, I'm not sure which bolt goes where. I can guess that these are the ones that go at the highest point, but otherwise I have no other real guess on where these go. And if you look at the parts breakdown, it only shows two different length bolts, uh, a short and a long. All right, so what I did with the bolts is I didn't realize that I mixed up all the bolts from the uh, Part that bolts on the oil filter. The longest bolts are the ones that go at the highest points on the, this cover, the casting. There you go, bam, bam. <laughs> then there are some that are like a medium length that have a little bit 
of a smooth part up top without threads that go in all the other spots except for this Allen screw, cap screw, whatever you want to call it. And then there's three long ones and then two short ones that go for that piece. All right, one thing I did do was uh, I also took Q-tips and I cleaned out where all the studs are going. Don't forget the O-rings because I just put this all the way together and forgot to put these in and I'm splicing it in. That 11 foot-pounds torque, that was out of the Caterpillar manual, and then the technical manual said up to 25. But uh, I, I just went in the middle and I did 18. I'm gonna start putting some of the stuff back together here. In the morning, I'm gonna have to go get the gasket kit for putting the turbo on, but I'm gonna put as much as I can back together here. There's three of these O-rings. They're part number 5F-9657. Well, this is about as far as I could go without having the gasket kit to put the turbo back on. Everything's back together in here. Belt's tight. Uh, I noticed it's better to actually tighten the belt tensioner from the bottom because you can kind of hold it down while you're tightening it up. So the oil drain tube, these bolts were really hard to get at with it on the truck. So I'm gonna replace this gasket and this O-ring before actually lifting the turbo to go up there so that way everything is going to be in place. The gasket part number that goes onto the turbo oil drain tube on the turbo side 7W-2398 and the TM says to tighten it down between 15 and 25 foot pounds, so I'm gonna go with 20. Same foot, foot pounds for the adapter that goes into the engine block. This O-ring, 4F7391, but you're not gonna see me really tighten this down until it's going on the truck. Gasket number between the turbo and the exhaust manifold, 7C7431. Okay, I just got done removing all this again so I could get this bolt in place. These ones are 15 to 25 inch pounds. All right, I'm getting the old O-ring off of the feed line, off the oil cooler up to the turbo. It's really hard to say, but I'm gonna get it out and I'm pretty sure I know which one it is from the oil cooler kit. And it's one of the O-rings that's so small in the kit that uh, it, it doesn't have the part number printed on it. And then according to the TM, the part number is really long. So I don't remember what it is. It's not in like a normal cap format where it's like a letter, number, a dash, and then four numbers. I'll make a caption with what the O-ring part number is that goes here. Here's the gasket part number, 1S7057, that's the top oil line. This one's 15 to 25 foot-pounds as well. There's a gasket similar to this that came in the oil cooler kit. It has a larger opening, so I'm just going to go with this one that I went and got from Cat. Okay, it looks like what I'm going to need to do as well is uh, 
on the oil cooler, that fitting, I didn't quite tighten it down at the exact angle that it was previously at. I'm gonna have to loosen it, adjust it to where it is. Then I'm gonna tighten the compression fitting down, tighten this down, and then tighten that nut. Okay. I forgot to bring my torque wrench over. I'll check the torque on that, but I'm gonna have to offload some video clips from my phone the last couple of days. I think it's just about full, but uh, move forward to putting all the piping and stuff back in. Okay, everything's put back in. I ran out of space on my phone, had to let it charge, but put the exhaust back together, the clamp that holds it down there, this in here, put that missing bolt. Um, I had forgot when I put the turbo on, the little red hose right there for the wastegate, I put that in place. Put this on the charge pipe and everything else. And I looked, I don't see any tools up there, nothing's loose. So, I'm going to have my wife sit here and look to you. Ready? Yeah. Just got back and shut the truck off. Motor was running for about three hours. And I was out there driving for about two and a half and about one and a half of it was wide open throttle highway driving. I had stopped from time to time. The truck stopped and stuff just to lift the cab and look to see anything. It looks pretty good. The only drip I noticed, if you can see it a little bit, is on the oil filter. And that possibly could have just been oil that was on top of the filter because they had that little lip. I'm thinking that's all it was because it wasn't even enough of a drip to get to the bottom. I think we have a success. Man, this thing really kicked my butt. Gave me a hard time, but it was a good learning experience. And ultimately I'm glad I did it myself instead of paying the dealer. Uh, it seems like it's a good fix. Since the repair, I've driven the truck probably 350 miles if I was to guess. I didn't actually look at the odometer and probably about six hours of drive time and uh, no leaks. So it definitely was a successful repair. Uh, hopefully this video was helpful for you or entertaining and uh, see you in the next update.